Hi everyone, in this video we're going to create a WordPress website using React. Yes, you're hearing it right, we're going to use React with WordPress in the nicest way possible. So we're going to use Frontasy's framework, which is just a built-in, completely standalone framework that is going to allow you to use WordPress as a backend that you can consume data from then in the other hand you can use react to render this data into the browser using your regular react node.js application and node.js server just serving this react application and you can pretty much use any react library any react technology you already use with your wordpress so that's a cool way and finally has been around for a couple of months right now and a lot of people are just loving it and you know me just whenever you find or wherever you pretty much you find react you're gonna find me. And WordPress, who doesn't know WordPress? Everybody just knows WordPress, goes crazy about WordPress. The whole world is shifted because of WordPress. So this is actually a fact that WordPress is just like the leading CMS on the world right now. And it's just like never stopping, it keeps growing. So we have to use WordPress at that place. It's free, open source, and all that kind of stuff. So you can go ahead and use it. So we're gonna be using this WordPress user in front of me. And there's actually a couple of demos you can go in and check, but the basic idea is actually since WordPress version, I guess 4.7, there is actually a RESTful API exposed from WordPress uh, server. So you can go in and point into this WordPress server, then you can go ahead and use it that way. So you can just go ahead and point it there, you can get a JSON response, and that's how your React is gonna get the data from WordPress. So you can still go ahead and use your WordPress as like a content editor, uh, as you know, putting pages there, dynamically putting pages, using posts, or even going and using the crazy amount of plugins available in WordPress store, and you can use it as a normal backend, as a normal WordPress website. On the other hand, you can grab React code, you set up React projects using Frontity, and you can consume this RESTful API using Frontity's available API, and you can render that data all using React. You can use Redux, style components, CSS and JS, many, many other things without the need to write any single line of PHP or anything of that sort. You know me, I'm not a real big fan of PHP. I really like React and how it does things and optionated stuff. So that makes sense. So here actually I'm gonna be using it with WordPress. Um, I hope you guys already know how to know or pretty much how to set up WordPress because I'm not gonna go into much details on how to set up and put a running, a fully running WordPress website and just like serve it out using Nginx and Apache or something like that. I'm just gonna go through how to set up front of the first right here. So if we go back to the docs, I'm gonna find a pretty well made up documentation in here. So we go to getting started. You're gonna find like what requirements you have to have like a WordPress installation. You can either ways have it like, you know, search from wordpress.com if you already got a free website there. Still can do the job perfectly. Or on the other hand, if you have it somewhere like uh, your local host or just like your regular website, you still can be using that as well. And of course, you're gonna be needing Node.js. So make sure to have a rerunning Node.js. So if I do uh, Node V, I got Node.js version 12. You know, you can have the latest one, that doesn't really matter. But yeah, you got the point. So this is pretty much what you need, an installation of NPM or MPX, and that's that's pretty much all you have got to do, okay? So let's go ahead and install finally here. And the basic stuff, you don't pretty much need to install it. So you can have, just go ahead and use MPX. So I'm gonna do MPX, Frenity, then you can do create, then you can provide it, whatever project's name, you want to have. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a project's name. I'm gonna say, um, so React, or let's go ahead and do like Frontity React or something, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. It's gonna go like grab Frontity for us, so it's gonna load that, and of course it's gonna go start the installation for us. So it might take a couple of seconds to minutes to get started. So the skill is gonna ask you a couple of questions, like what theme you need to be installed, because Farini here has a couple of themes that already can get you started, that you don't have to get a bare minimum stuff. You can have a theme, but of course you can go and install a quick start, like start from scratch with Farini with no theme, but I really recommend getting some of your theme, it's gonna help you a lot. To understand how Fernity actually works and how, how it handles data and state and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna choose Mars theme. This is the basic most recommended theme. 
I'm gonna go and choose that. And for in here, CLI is gonna go and install for us, set up a kind of JSON, install all the themes and all the dependencies for us. So I've got to wait a couple of minutes for this. So there you go, Fernand has started the project successfully. We can go ahead and see uh, the project. So we can do CD, what we named it, Fernand dash reacts. So that's the project. It's just a normal Node.js reacts project basically. So let's go ahead and open up this using our code editor in here. And I'm gonna use VS Code. So of course it depends on what code editor you want. So this VS Code is gonna do the job. So this is basically the project that finally set up for us. It's just pretty basic project, has vector JSON, has a couple of like scripts to start development server and stuff. And there are a couple of dependencies installed like Fernity, Fernity Core, WP Source. So these are official packages from Fernity that are gonna help you build that. For example, this one is gonna allow you to fetch data from the like WordPress, your WordPress's website, uh, RESTful API. So this one has like the basic API to do so. There's a tiny router, HTML to react to render your like WordPress content, which comes as HTML, of course, to react safely and Mars theme, which is just basically the theme we're gonna be using right here. And there are a couple of stuff in here you can go ahead and check out. So the basic structure in here, there's actually a packages and inside of packages, you're gonna find your theme. You can have multiple themes, but you can have like multiple themes, which means multiple folders in here, each one has its own, and you can switch themes by Faraday settings. And if you take a look on this Faraday settings.js, so this is the main settings file for your Faraday projects. So it tells it pretty much to do everything. This one is actually your Redux store states, basically, if you're familiar with that, like what is the title of the website, the description, uh, this one packages, like what, Packages are currently installed and being used by Fernandez Core. And this one's like, for example, there's Mars theme installed. Um, if you take a look on down here, there's Tiny Router and there's HTML to React, which we've reviewed before. And there's also WP source. And this is basically the most important part in here to check out. Is actually this URL has to point somewhere. And this currently is actually pointing to test.fernandez.org, which basically means this is actually just a test WordPress server already like set it up by Fernity itself. And this just has like a WordPress server just to get you started and work with like whatever is actually available there. But to use your own custom WordPress server in here, you have to provide the URL in here, either from local host or from like, uh, you know, a domain name if you have this one hosted somewhere. And yeah, that's, that's basically what it is. And here, for example, you got Mars theme. There's a couple of settings like the menu you wanna show up, the URLs that I wanna go through, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, there's actually, it depends on the theme, but we're gonna cover all of that and try to explain this a bit by bit while we go forward. So right now, this is actually how it works. If you take a look on the Mars theme, there's actually SRC, there's components, which has basically all the components you need. And if you open up anything, for example, this index, um, this, this one is just like, an export for the Marth theme and how it does being exported. This is the main entry point. But if you go into like the index.js for the theme, so it's clear in here, it's basically a normal React. So just go and like import React. Uh, it have a theme function, just a functional components. It has props here uh, and it returns like a GSX component. So it returns like a fragment component. There's a title component, head component, head container, main switch. And this place is doing some routing and yada, yada, yada. So that's basically what it is. Just like a basic component. And this is actually the power of what I'm saying about building React application alongside WordPress. So you use pretty much the WordPress's RESTful API, then you can grab the data from WordPress and you can render it directly using React, your beloved technologies, your beloved libraries and all that sort of stuff. That sounds absolutely amazing for me. If it doesn't amaze you that much, I'm, I'm super excited to use that in my personal projects. So yeah, that one looks absolutely amazing and super, super stunning. So this is basically what a project looks like if you got Fernie. Just to get started, you can go ahead and like customize whatever files in it. You can even go in and delete that and just start from scratch. You can even do though, uh, do that. But I don't really recommend that because the theme is gonna give you like a just a push up to a quick configuration that you can do. And Mars theme in here is just like a minimal theme. So you're not gonna have a lot of add-ons and all that kind of stuff. But just like, 
get a bare minimum setup so you can go ahead and get started. So let me show you how the theme looks like and how to open up. So we can get open up a terminal real quick. We got everything in start screen, see now modules already exist. So if we go back to the pack.json, we got the scripts. So dev is actually for starting a development, a web pack development server basically. And there is actually build to build this for production and serve to start a Node.js server to start and serve this production ready uh, application. So all we need is just gonna use yarn or npm, whatever, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna do yarn dev. And this one just starts like a server started, it's gonna be listing on 3000 ports and it's gonna start that server somewhere. So let's go ahead and import up this. Um, it's gonna start it on 3000. So we have gotta wait for this a bit to get started. I basically don't need this, neither this. And uh, yeah, so we got, we've got to wait for this to a bit to start like the Webpack development server. There you go. It already is started. So if we go back, there you go. So that's the theme and how it looks like. It's looking just a pretty basic theme. Doesn't really do a lot of stuff here. It only renders just some couple of posts. If you click on it, it's going to take you to the post page with images and all that contents that you want to dynamically change, of course. So that's that's basically what it is. So yeah, that, that looks absolutely amazing. You can go nature, there's actually a category going on. As you see the links change, which is pretty, pretty great. There's travel, there's about us, you can check about them and, and it takes you actually to the link and it does fetch from the WordPress server. So right now the server is actually fetching the data from is actually this server that is auto pre-configured for us, which is like test.fornify.org. So try to go to this. Uh, let's go ahead and see what goes inside of that. So we're basically gonna get like a WordPress. If you take a look on Webalizer, it already has like WordPress in here and it uses basically WordPress with PHP. So that's that's a regular WordPress website. And this one, this is actually, you can have this as your own website. Then you can create another website that it takes the API, takes actually the same data from this website but renders it in a different way. So this one is gonna be used like a database or a backend, and it's gonna use the RESTful API, grab the data, and it's going to render it using React on this particular website using Fernity. This is absolutely amazing, and this can open up a lot of possibilities in how you can manage um, like React with WordPress and how WordPress can be used in the future. So that is, that is crazily awesome. So right now, as I said, this is being used as a test, but the, the main challenge and the main idea is actually you want to use your own custom WordPress website. So this is pretty clear. So how we can go ahead and set up our WordPress website. I'm pretty sure a lot of you does already know how to set up a WordPress website and I'm not going to go into details on how to fully set up a website, but I'm just going to give you some trips and tricks and how to get a website up and running and how to set up Nginx to actually do the proper routing for actually WordPress to work properly with a frenemy or with like the React application, otherwise it would just like fail when you without the right configuration. So yeah, so right now we got some decent website that's gonna work on A88 port. If I see that, so this is basically the website currently it uses like WordPress. I already created an account and got some stuff set up on it. So uh, so that's that's basically what's going on in this website. It's pretty pretty basic nothing too um, crazy or something like that. Okay, so how we can go and use this website? Right now, if you've got a website already running, all you've gotta do, just basically all you've gotta do is just go back here and you can change this link with localhost 888 and you are basically done. So you're gonna see all the magic gonna happen and all the stuff gonna work perfectly. But on the other hand, if you have a website or a WordPress website, you need to set up one first. So let's go ahead and see how we can go ahead and create our WordPress website, okay? So I'm gonna create, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna create a make directory in here and make it or name this as my WordPress website. So I'm gonna do WordPress. I'm gonna make, okay, I'm gonna make this, um, I'm gonna name it WordPress website indeed. So I'm gonna cd into this real quick. So this is actually just an empty directory, right? Now let's go ahead and download. All you've got to do is just go back to wordpress.org and download the content. Or the best way, which I love pretty much a lot, is actually using the, the CLI called WordPress CLI, just WP-CLI. 
CLI. And this CLI can be installed, of course, and you've got to go in and check out the guide and how to install this. So let me go and show you uh, how to install that. So WP CLI, and you can go and check out WPCLI.org. So basically in here has all the actual instructions on how to install that. So you can use curl and you can use PHP, then you can just copy it into the user local bin, WordPress, and voila, you got everything set up. So you can go in and check out this, how to do it. I'm not gonna go into the details on how to set up that. So you can go ahead and use this, so you can do website, like WPCLI, then download. So this basically, um, yeah, it's not called WPCLI in here. The alias should be WP. So you'd go, you go ahead and do download. Uh, it's not registered, so you have to do core download, sorry. And this one's gonna download the most recent um, version exclusive 5.7 is the most recent one English US and this one has been downloaded. Do LS, you're gonna find all the WordPress PHP files there and the whole setup goes right underneath there. Now how we can go and do like the configuration? So using WP, so you can do config, then you can provide the DB name for example, um, like WordPress dash DB. Um, you have got a couple of other things like DB uh, user. So you can say, for example, root. Then you can see DB pass, and you can you know set up your password or root or something. Um, so config create one mally using WF config create. Is it? Uh, so access denied to the to the database pretty much. So yeah, I've got to, you've got to go in and choose the right password for this to work. So after doing that, just choosing the right password is going to give you the, actually uh, the configuration right, and you've going to got everything working correctly. So now configured, it works with the database and everything. What you've got to do next is go ahead and use WP. Then you can do core install. Then you can provide, for example, the URL of the website that you want. In our case, we're gonna have HTTP localhost a8. Uh, we're gonna have the title to be WordPress website, for example. And I guess we're gonna have some. Um, uh, I guess it's uh, it's WordPress username. Let me go ahead and check out what it is. So WordPress DB, which means your username and password is okay, but not able to select WordPress DB. Uh, okay, can select whatever database it is. Yeah, basically because I didn't chose the right name for it to work. So yeah, I just like fix that real quick, just change the name of the database. And here all it has to be is like WP then admin. So this is actually the admin or the username you want. So I'm gonna do just like that. WP then say email. So I'm gonna say, um, so it's gonna be user. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and choose my email real quick in here. Gmail.com. And last but not least, gonna be WP password. So you can choose whatever. We're gonna choose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And that should um, that should make it work. So a known parameter, and it should be admin. So this one is admin password, admin email. And um, what is that? So it's admin user. Okay. My bad here. So let me just fix that real quick. And there you go. So WordPress is already installed for me, but you should get like WordPress is installed successfully and all of that is done. So the installation of WordPress right now is completed. All you've got to do, the last thing, is actually set up Nginx or Apache. Actually, it depends on what you like. But I love Nginx. This pretty simple server and you go ahead and configure that to point into the current directory so you want to configure it to point to this directory like WordPress website and make this directory as like the website you know root so whenever you go into port AA8 it's gonna just redirect you to this directory to use the index.php so that's exactly what I want to do right here um, we can go ahead and just do that real quick I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new tab and um, in fact, I uh, guess, okay, let's, let's go ahead and continue with just a single tab. I don't wanna change the font right here. So we can go back to CD. So the place where the uh, configuration is actually ETC and Nginx. 
take a look there's actually a couple of folders so the folder we're interested the most ads is actually sites available so this points into like what type of website are available there's actually default and wordpress conf now i'm interested in the default i don't care about this one it's actually a different configuration so the default is actually currently being used by default from nginx server so i was going to do this i'm going to use sudo nano default to make sure to use sudo because this is actually a right protected otherwise you won't be able to um okay just like mistakenly entered my sudo password so let me just see here and there you go so we got here and this is actually the configuration that works perfectly for the nginx and make sure um yeah probably just make sure to go ahead and use that particular configuration like what i mean by this configuration let me walk you through that so it's actually this list in and this is actually what port you want to list in for the second one is actually the roots so this is where you have to point this is actually the most important part so you have to point this to your wordpress uh, installation directory so the directory that we have just or like installed wordpress on so you have to point this and you have to use the absolute path creates in your home is lampinous source tutorials and WordPress core and this is where you have it basically here index what indexes he uses just subdomains error logs and this one this this location forward slash this one's gonna also gonna just like uh, do a proper redirection for parameters and all of us Christian he uses is args and args so make sure to do use that to do a proper parameter um, and queries for WordPress to work fine and the last one in here is actually WordPress JSON and these is actually very mandatory otherwise WP JSON or RESTful API that is exported from WordPress won't work for you so make sure to go ahead and like use that do location what WordPress JSON and rewrite this into this particular URL so like you test this and just like do you know perfectly rewrite this so he, he recognizes this and WordPress can pretty much provide with the rest for API. If you don't do this, if you don't like enable permalinks, uh, just it's gonna, not gonna work for you. So make sure to do that. And all the rest, just like all the rest down here is pretty much just like optional, but yeah, it's really good to use it. So you can just point JS and CSS. This should already been done by default by Nginx, but yeah, make sure you go and use that as well, like the favigon and the robots file for like uh, SEOs and all of that. So that's basically the configuration that you need for Nginx. I uh, just like showed you that real quick. You can go ahead and use it. I'm not gonna, as I said before, I'm not gonna just like go ahead and set up WordPress and Nginx all for all of a sudden from start to finish, but that should make the job for you easier to actually understand if you face up any issues with that. Okay, and the last thing of just like putting this configuration, it should be uh, all you have to do is just do sudo system ctl for system control and you can go ahead and do like uh, nginx or i guess you have to do restart nginx and this one should restart nginx server and it should like use the new configuration here so you can do sudo system ctl status for nginx and you can check out the status of nginx so it's clearly currently running and like where is the process id or the pid uh, so yeah everything is working fine we see like nginx has been started and it's currently running fine so there is no issues or no configuration errors cool so that's basically all you have to do to configure wordpress just a quick workaround on how wordpress should be configured in that particular part so let's go and go back in here and let me show you my wordpress website so i already did uh, yeah go into the wordpress website so it's pretty basic. So this is basically we're gonna be using to grab this data. So if we go into WP JSON and WP V2 post, so this is the URL. You basically all you have to point is WP JSON. This is where the RESTful API is gonna work. As far as in here, we already got a JSON response from that. So clearly, see this response is just like an array for all the posts that are available inside of like. Uh, pretty much our WordPress's website. So our WordPress website, the database and everything, the API is gonna fetch you for that and we use all the query parameters and everything is pretty much available. WordPress is gonna be available throughout this RESTful API. So you can go ahead and use it the same way as it is. So yeah, that's that's actually the best way and the proper way to go ahead and handle that. And that's why Frontify is using this really nice feature from WordPress to make React available 
for WordPress theme creation or website creation. Pretty cool, right? Now we got WordPress set up, we got the server running, we understood how RESTful API is working from WordPress's side. And yeah, so the time here is actually to go back into our folder or our projects. So this is actually the project. This is Frontify's projects. If you take a look on the deep, this is actually the settings and you have to change this to localhost 8000. Just do change that. Uh, you probably need to go ahead and just like restart the server. Um, most of the times the settings will just take effects, but restarting is always a good idea. So yeah, you got the points because you're gonna go start this and dev server is gonna start up, okay? So um, yeah, there you go, we got the startup. Uh, take a look, localhost 3000. Yeah, we got all the other posts are cleared out and we got hello word, welcome to WordPress. This is the edit post, this is actually the first post and this has been created by me today. So you got about us, we got some about us page, working on home, nature, travel, Japan, whatever here is actually going on. So uh, yeah, pretty cool, looking absolutely amazing. And you have to do if you want to just like out other posts. In fact, this one is actually rendering and returning the DNF from the network. If you refresh that, I'm gonna take a look that this one indeed. So let me, uh, I guess I can zoom in here, not sure. So you can take a look, this is actually like requesting localhost AA8, which is where our WordPress server is running on. We got WP JSON, REST API, and it gets the post and it gets some parameters like page one and which author it is. And it gets the data. If you take a look at a preview, we got the post data. We got like the slug. Uh, we got post contents, which is rendered on HTML. Pretty cool. We got like the days. We got the link modified. All the info you would pretty much get from a WordPress website. And this is all it needed to actually render that properly. If you click on it, it's gonna take you to this WordPress website. So let me just go back right here. And if you take a look on post, we got only hello world right now. And what I did for the settings to work is actually they changed, uh, I think reading, I guess permalinks, yeah. So permalinks in here changed it from plain, which is just basically gonna, it should use only IDs to fetch the data. If you're familiar with WordPress, hope you guys are, because this is um, not gonna explain a lot of that. But post name in here is gonna use slugs of the actual post slugs that are unique identifiers for a particular post or for a particular web page. Well, that's what's gonna be used in here to fetch the data. That's what I chose, I saved the settings. And that's why here I've been able to like go, for example, about us, it goes inside like about dash us. This is actually the slug of this about us page and it's being used in here by Frontify. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool as far as I can tell uh, from about us page and that is actually looking uh, absolutely great, okay? so. It gets the post, it gets everything. If we try, go ahead and add another post. For example, we can, um, so let's go ahead and do, uh, we'll just add a new post. I'm not really familiar with a lot of WordPress, but new post uh, from Frontify. I think Frontify, yeah, sorry, it's not Frontify. So this is actually the post. You got categories, whatever. Um, there's no category. Hello word, so you can use that. Um, yeah, so you can drag and drop. You can you can go and add in images. So let me um, so media library, media library. Is there any available images already? I hope so. I don't I don't see that. So uh, yeah, whatever. So they're gonna publish this. So we're gonna publish it to public. No tags. Uh, so no post from fantasy. This is actually the slug has been created for us. So if we go back, refresh, we're gonna get the new post. And in fact, it's actually being ordered by date. So that's pretty good. Go inside of it, we got the post, uh, the other in here. So we are getting it right in the perfect way. Let me zoom in a bit for you guys to see. So that's looking absolutely great. So whatever post you add, it gets added. Whatever content you add, it gets added. If you wanna add multiple pages, you can go to like, for example, about us in here. If you clicks on it, it takes you to a specific page and all that sort of stuff. Looking absolutely great. Now let's go ahead. I'm gonna try to actually customize this landing page. I'm gonna change this landing page from showing posts 
uh, of like the current post into creating our custom landing page. Just a quick one to exactly see how FrontDT uh, framework works out. So I'm gonna close in the settings. Now it's gonna close in everything. So I'm gonna go inside of Mars theme, I'm gonna go inside of components, I'm gonna create a new component, I'm gonna name this um, home page. All right, I'm gonna create a folder. Side of it gonna be an index of GSX. This is the entry point for our index, like home page com like components pretty much. So I'm gonna use React real quick in here. So I'm gonna import React. I'm gonna export a function. This one is gonna be um, home page. So it's gonna have a couple of props and all that stuff. And you know, the props in here can be used uh, like what front is it can be providing like the store and the state because front end inside of it's like behind the scenes is going to handle the state using redux so you don't have to implement your redux store yourself no front is going to give you all of that inside of like out of the box and you don't have to worry about state management and all that all you have to do is just consume the state and put into the state or push into the store then retrieve basically that's all you have got to do because Frontend wants you to, to actually take the simplest way and the simplest approach to create a WordPress websites and you know as you possibly could. So that's what's going on right here. Okay, so let me kind of check uh, how post is being rendered. I guess there's a couple of stuff. Let me copy this container. And I'm gonna put it on top. I don't like. It puts it in the bottom. So styled in here is, I guess it's imported from uh, front C. So I'm just gonna use front C. I'm gonna import styled from front C, and we should get styled. This is actually a style components. So yeah, if you're familiar with style component, that's basically what it is in here. There's container and there is style. So I'm gonna return container. And I'm gonna return a title. And uh, welcome to Frontity or something. I don't know. Just whatever. It should make the job uh, working. So if you go into the index.js, if you see before, we already got some switching and some routing working on. So this switch component is going to do some routing for us. It's a custom made switch component, which it basically checks. So the main idea behind this one is actually checking for a when prop that's going to be provided to the children. So it's curious in here, each child is component or each component is pretty much here is having a prop that is called when and this prop is actually just a boolean. So if this one is true, this component is going to be rendered, otherwise it's going to be just like completely hidden. So and and of course, it's not only using that, it's using actually the cascading is actually using the order. So if loading is actually true, and it's actually being rendered first and it list is true too. So loading is gonna just, you know, become on top of that and it's gonna render on top of list. So the list won't show up and loading won't show up. So you can take this as just like pages on top of each other's and this one is gonna take effect over the others because it's in, on the top. So that's, that's basically what it is going on on the switch there. So that's why I wanna have my components right there. So it's gonna have um, home page components. I want it on the top because I want this to be uh, the topest one. And let's have it just right underneath loading because loading is actually, you know, needs to be on the top. I'm gonna have when, I'm gonna check data is home. So this this boolean in here, this property is gonna be provided by Frontity. So Frontity does some checking on behalf of that. So if it is actually home page, like which means landing page, it means just a forward slash like that. So it's gonna put true to this property. Otherwise it will be false as the other properties do. So if you go and save that, and if you go back here, uh, so new post from Frontity, I don't need this. If you go back, there you go. So we got our home page is taking effect, and we got, in fact, welcome to Frontity. Working fine, right? How sweet is that? It's just as simple as this to add this home page and to make it actually work on Frontend. Looking absolutely great already. Now, if you take a look on the Frontend here, so you can add pretty much, go back into the home page. You can do pretty much whatever. You can do whatever style of user reacts. You can you can have all sorts of stuff. 
And in fact, if you go back right here, screws in here, how data fetching is being done is actually you get data, there's a state, source, get, and it provides it with a current link, which could be the current, um, you know, states link or something like that, or, or the post link. And this one is gonna fetch it from the WordPress server, RESTful API, and it's gonna return the data. So if we go back in here, we can do like console log data. Okay, data. So if we go into the browser here, we should get some data being logged in into the browser. So it takes a couple of times, Chrissy, to update the server. And there you go, got data. So it's being rendered out in the proxy, you got targets, um, objects in here. And there you go. So this is actually the data we get by just like rendering or requiring from the home page. We got items, which is basically like what type of posts we got already, like new posts and whatever. Uh, like query, got link, is home, is fetching, is archive, is ready. And we got the type of this, this particular page, which is post, which is like the default type used across any WordPress website pretty much. Um, there's total pages and, and, and all of that stuff. So this is actually what it gets and this is being fetched from WordPress itself. So you can fetch as well the data of the WordPress website uh, as well and that's actually as, as it goes on. So let's go ahead into like the about us page. So if you take a look uh, on about us page, so let me go and check. Um, so I believe the about us page is gonna be like contained inside of that, inside of the post. So the post is gonna handle any type of post. So is post type, yeah, so the page is gonna be is post type and it's gonna render that too. Uh, right here. So this is actually going to take care of rendering any web page you provide it. So as soon as it gets the data from the server, then it, you know, you can just like take the data from that state that has been pushed into. So later on, you can go ahead and render that right beneath right here. And it does dangerously set in your HTML to set the in HTML that is being, you know, getting from pretty much the server and all that stuff. And it uses like data is ready which is just like a loading mechanism provided by Frontity just to check if the data is actually loaded and everything so we can render stuff, otherwise just gonna like put null and render nothing. So that's basically what it is. So if you take a look on the data that is being fetched by the post in here, so just by doing console log data and we can console log the actual data that is being fetched because this one, this post data, is actually provided getting from source then it uses data type, which is basically post, and it gets data ID to get and select that particular post with that particular ID. So let's go ahead and just like put that data and see what actually has underneath. So we can just fully understand exactly how the API works and what it does behind the scenes. Okay, so let's go ahead, check out this. So this is actually the proxy uh, for the data. So we're gonna go to a page, for example, about us. So if we take a look um, into that data, so as you in here, this one takes a bit of time to show up on the console. Why? Because this is actually a proxy and actually sending it into Fernity to get the data. If you're asking why, because this is actually using some server side rendering. It's not actually like a client stuff. So yeah, it has to do it this way to uh, properly work. So we might need to refresh that because debugging sometimes gets uh, throttled and it doesn't properly work from that side. So uh, so if we go back to in here, it already has been printed for us this data. So you got the data and the data. So it basically has this type of thing, the ID, which is the post ID and all of that. But um, if we go in and check out this, we got about us, which is having an ID of six and having having that. So this is this is basically what it gets as the DNA there. Just like, what is the link? What is the ID of the current page and all that? Just to get it from the server. Now later, what it does, it basically goes and just does post and it grabs that data from the post. So if we go ahead and put the post instead, so this one is gonna get the post data from the state because this state.router.link is gonna be used to fetch the data. So this get function or get method is gonna fetch the data from this particular route from you know, WordPress's server, then you populate it automatically into like state.source. So state.source is actually like 
the main um, API source where all the API data is going to be saved in. It's actually inside of that. So that's uh, that's the place you want to check out. So if you take a look, and we already got some data. We got author, we got contents, the current contents being rendered, the title, uh, we got modified dates, we got status, if it's published or not. And we got like, uh, is it rendered? Or, or pretty much what title is being rendered and the type, which is page currently. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's basically what's going on in here. And that's how it's actually being handling that data fetching and how it's being handling it and grabbing it from like WordPress's servers. Now let's try to go ahead and change a bit of the website's design because right now it just looks a pretty minimal ugly website with just like a blue header and some you know navigation mark like links in here that's not really styled or something. So you might wanna just do something good and just like if you want to customize this fully, just this theme and take it from the ground up and make it your own website, well you can do so if you are already familiar with like style components and pretty much uh, React, CSS, a bit of CSS, that's all you pretty much need. So if you go to the index, this is where the full page is being rendered. So if you're wondering where the full page is, this is where it is. Actually, you've got the title, you've got the head. This one is actually being used from the header or like head frontity. So this one is gonna be put inside of the head indeed. And here, the head, container so add the head to the site this is basically what it does now we got the main and this is where it gets you know rendered so uh, that's that's basically all you have gonna do so you all have to go to back into the header and this is where you got the header we got some navigation links we got the mobile menu if it needs to be rendered in case if it needs to be rendered so is mobile menu just like uh, is open so this one uses some responsive design to check if it is or not and just render some hamburger menu and all that. And we've got some description, we've got some title, and we've got some style link, and we've got some container. So if this is actually the container, as clearly you see, you've got color, um, box sizing of this, and um, where is that? So we've got some colors and border radius. We've got some styled mobile menu, container, nav, if you go back into um, index.js, we've got header container and take a look on this. Yeah, this is where the color is. So we might need to go ahead and change this color. Uh, I don't know, you can go ahead and customize this however you want, as I said before. Yeah, yeah, it became red, which is perfectly horrible. But anyway, so um, yeah, so this is basically how, if you wanna just go ahead and customize this, if you want it completely white, doesn't matter, you can have this, but this one, it won't work. It won't even show up. Completely back, that would look a bit better. Um, 15, okay, we're programmers, we are dark people, so we might wanna do that as well. So we got about us here. Um, yeah, we might we might just go in and play with some navigation links if you want to. Uh, there's main in here, which does a background image of a linear gradient. I don't know where that's being used. But yeah, I guess this is the main part in here. Um, if we go, so there is there's perfectly some uh, content state front description. This is where the description is being held up. So front dot description, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so you can do welcome to our website. If you want to edit up the description, I guess this will be taking effect. Not sure. Yeah, there you go. So we got welcome to our website. This is where the description is. Test Fernity blog. Uh, you can change that to so awesome website. Yeah, if you want to change that to there you go. We got one website or awesome website. I can't even spell that. Sorry. And we got welcome to our website. We got the description. Everything actually is pretty much held up on the state. So you see this state. It pretty much represents the main state for that project, for your own projects. So if you are familiar with Redux, you can take this as your own state pretty much store. So this is the initial store from where it gets started, where it gets the initial state. So he gets that, he puts front of it, puts the URL, the current URL, uh, he puts the title, puts the description and everything on that. So we later on, on the inside of the, like pretty much the application, you got this state. 
then you can access. So this is pretty much gonna be the store. So you can do state of RNA and whatever, and you can use that. In fact, since this is actually a Redux thing, you can go ahead and use it the same way with Redux. You can create selectors, you can use reselects, if you're familiar with that as well. You can use dispatch, dispatch that, but it already has its own exported functions to do so. So you're not gonna have a lot to worry about that to, or how, how you pretty much gonna be able to do it, okay? So that is looking good, so far so good. So if you wanna just go ahead and customize the navigation, um, yeah, you can do so. There is some media careers in here for responsive design, uh, line height in here, so border bottom, we can, we can go ahead and change this, I guess, uh, if there is any font size we can change. Okay, font size, yes, there it is. So we might wanna increase this by 1.1 yam, why not? I'm gonna make this a bit big, bigger. Uh, there you go, so we got some bigger stuff going on. And we got the border is a bit bigger as well. So yeah, looking good. You can go ahead and take this, just tear it down and customize it however you want. And yeah, so yeah, if you want like something like this, want a video where we can tear this down and create our own theme and use everything, well, we can do that. Just let me know in the comments if you really like this idea, if you really like Fantasy and how ideas just combine and react with, you know, WordPress and gets all that data as a backend and all that kind of stuff. I will be very, very happy and glad to make something like this for you guys to uh, quickly understand and get into the ship right here. So yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Cool. Let's go ahead and try to go ahead and build this into production and see what it does exactly in a production place. So all I've got to do, I'm going to just go ahead and choose go package.json, we got finally, then build. To build that, then we can serve it. So uh, if we're trying to do yarn build, so this one will build us the projects and it will build like the static project with the server side rendering for us and everything. So just like provide you with a full project that you can go in and serve a Node.js server from. So after the build is actually done, we got a folder here for the build and this is pretty much all you need. So the full website, the whole website you've got to need is actually inside of this folder. So it's basically the build, there's analyze, some HTML files, and there's a static. So your static files in here, your static JavaScript side because it does some static side rendering as well so yeah we got that and got the server this is actually the main entry point for the file so it's going to start up a node.js server it's going to serve all the static react javascript files and the css files and html files throughout this server so you don't have to worry about anything or rather than just like getting this data or getting this pretty much folder uh your javascript and your server js into your hosting, whatever you are like a hosting or you can use netfly or versa with that to deploy it then you can just start the server, point into this file, boom, that's all you need. In that case in here, all we have to do is just go and run yarn serve to start like a server, it's gonna start hosting it on the 3000, and in fact, it's gonna have the same server, but this time, it's gonna be running on production, which means we're gonna have a fully minified code running on production. So if we go back, run a new server, other than that, so we're gonna run 3000 again, we're gonna get the same website as I said before, still works, but this one, it's not gonna be the same as the other because this one is a production-based website. It only gets the JavaScript files and it does it here on, like it does some SSR, it does some static side rendering, plus it also has some client side rendering as well. So it's actually the both, or I'm gonna say three words combined together, really joyful words, just having it all combined using Fernity and the power of WordPress. So that's pretty much it guys for today's, I uh, hope you guys actually enjoyed this idea and I really like, like WordPress and I like React a lot. So just combining this for me is gonna open up a lot of opportunities if you wanna create like a web website, personal website or anything like that, like a freelance website, maybe why not? Looks pretty similar and I really love the idea, really love the API and I really, really like SSR for SEO. Makes sense, right? So thank you guys for watching as before. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this kind of tutorials and you know, like if you really want more stories like this, enjoy WordPress, this kind of stuff, combine it with React, let me know. I'll be very, very happy to give you more guys of that and just be productive on what we can create next. Yeah, so as I said before, thank you guys for watching. See you all in the next one. <laughs>